Hey, this is Brooks with Character Design Forge. Every day for the last three years, I've used Procreate on the iPad Pro as my main drawing app for character design, illustration, comics work, you name it. It's a fully featured program with most of the same features you'd find in Paint Tool Sci, Clip Studio Paint, or Photoshop. I wanna walk you through how to get started using the program, and there's timestamps in the description below for each section. Right off the bat, I will recommend that you use the Apple Pencil as a stylus with Procreate instead of just a finger or perhaps a cheaper or different company's stylus along with the iPad. This isn't really about brand loyalty and I completely understand the urge to purchase something that's at a cheaper price point. It's just the compatibility between these two things, the way that they kind of sync together uh, makes it the superior product. The one on the left here is the Apple Pencil from the first generation and the one on the right here is for the third generation and whichever iPad you have uh, is which pencil is going to be compatible. They are not cross compatible between generations of iPads. So this is basically what you'll be greeted with when you first open up Procreate. I'm actually within a stack, which is like a subfolder of files, uh, keeping sort of the rest of my main screen off of the screen here, but this is the general layout. And up here on the upper right hand corner is where you're going to be able to create a new document. And within here, you're able to either create a custom size at the bottom or choose any of the ones that you've used before, or you can simply open a document that you've already created. When you create a custom size document here, you can change the width and height and also the DPI here, which is important. I like to work a little bit higher in the 600 DPI range, at least 300 to 450 is also good. But notice that the size and DPI has a direct relation to the amount of maximum layers that you're able to have. So keep that in mind. If I wanted to do something like uh, 4,800 by 6,400, uh, notice that the maximum layers has now gone down to 13. Uh, that is also going to be dependent on how powerful the iPad that you're using is. So now let's open up one of our documents, and this is the UI that you're greeted with. And I want to focus on the upper right-hand corner first, then we'll do the left-hand corner, and then we'll work out some more things. The first option you have here is the brush tool. Tapping it once will allow you to use it, and tapping it twice will allow you to open up the brush library, or tapping it once while it's already selected. The brush is going to let you lay down pixels, and we'll get into what shape, consistency, and more later. The smudge and eraser tools are similar to the brush tool. The smudge will push pixels around, like the name suggests, and I would suggest not using it too much. The eraser is the same exact tool as the brush, but it just removes pixels instead. So we'll lay something down with the brush tool, and then using the eraser tool, cut away with it. Pretty simple. The next icon that you have there is the Layers menu. Every layer in Procreate is like a sheet of glass. It's completely transparent except for what you add. So the plus button here on the upper right hand corner will create a new layer, which always defaults to normal mode, and we'll get into layers a little bit more later and what a normal layer is and what isn't. The circle on the far right is where you choose colors. Tapping it will bring up the color picker menu with four types of menus at the bottom, disc, classic, value, and of course palettes where you can choose a set of colors ahead of time. You can choose a color in here and now your brush will use the same color, but you can also drag from the circle down into your canvas in order to fill either the entire canvas or a part of it. To switch to the color that you previously had selected, press and hold on the color picker and you'll see it change back. To undo, tap the screen with two fingers. To redo, tap the screen with three fingers. You can press and hold to cycle through undos and redos in quick succession. Now for the top left menu. Starting from the right, the cursor will select everything in your layer, which will then bring up a menu at the bottom with several options for moving, scaling, and warping the selection. In the layers panel, you can drag to the right from the left in order to select multiple layers at a time. So for here, I can drag all of my layers that contain this yellow glowing paint and then hit that button in order to move everything around at once instead of just one. The magnetic option here allows you to lock and scale and 
draw in straight lines, but turning it off will allow you to move things a little bit more freely, especially under the Distort tab. To the left of the cursor is the Select tool, which helps you grab specific portions of your layer. Automatic allows you to select all of a certain color, and pressing and sliding to the left and right changes the threshold of the selection. Now in Photoshop, this was called Tolerance. Basically, it changes how different a pixel to the one that you're already selecting it will include, zero being none and 100 being basically all. Freehand allows you to trace like a lasso in the area that you want to select, and tapping will create points and straight lines like the polygonal lasso tool, if you're familiar with that. You can mix your selections up between these two. Tap the origin point when you're done, and tap remove if you'd like to remove something from your selection. This isn't deleting what's on the layer, it's modifying the selection itself. The rectangular and ellipse tools allow you to select with these shapes. And if you hold a second finger down onto the screen, you will constrain them to be a perfect square or perfect circle. The next button in the menu to the left is a little wand, signifying the adjustments menu. Here you can create blurs, change the opacity, adjust the hue, saturation, and brightness, all with sliders or dragging your finger or stylus left or right. Also in this menu is the liquify tool, which is an advanced tool similar to the one in Photoshop. If you're not familiar with it, that's the one that they use to make models look 50 pounds lighter for magazine covers. This allows you to distort and move the pixels around, shrinking or expanding in an area. You can undo your terrible deeds with the typical undo action, the reset action, or the reconstruct tool, which lets you reset only where you brush. The button farthest to the left is Actions with a wrench icon. This is kind of like a file menu in a way. You can modify the canvas here, cropping and resizing. You can flip the canvas, which when done horizontally is a great way to get fresh eyes on a drawing, and get stats on how long you've worked on a piece, how big the file size is, and how long the video is. Now what do I mean by video? Well, after the standard share option, which allows you to output in almost any image file format, you'll notice an option for video. When you tap time-lapse replay, you can watch the creation of your artwork from beginning to end. You can even scrub through the video by dragging left and right. If you'd like to share this video, you can tap export time-lapse video and maybe edit it in another program, add some music, and throw it on Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. In preferences, you can make some more advanced tweaks that suit your comfort. It's in the bottom option here, gesture controls, that you can learn and choose what gestures do what. Now for me, I made it so holding down that button between the size and opacity sliders on the side of the screen and tapping with my finger will eye drop a color. Holding the button and tapping with my pencil will change what layer I'm on based on what I'm tapping. You can do whatever you want in here, just find something that works for your workflow. Speaking of those sliders, they live on the side of your screen, the left side if you're right-handed. The top one changes the size of your brush. The bottom one changes the opacity, or how transparent your brush is, the top being completely opaque at 100%, and the bottom being very weak and transparent. Remember that pencil pressure will still affect brush opacity. The button in the middle of these two sliders is kind of like the control or command key on a keyboard, and act as modifiers for things that you set up in the gesture controls menu. If you drag down with three fingers, you'll get the cut, copy, and paste menu. If you have something selected, you can cut, copy, or paste it onto a new layer. In the Layers panel, tapping the checkbox to the right of it will turn its visibility on or off. Tapping the name of the layer will bring up a menu of options where you can rename, select all the contents, copy, fill the layer, clear the layer, lock the opacity with alpha lock, which makes it so you can draw over what's already there, this is great for painting or coloring line art, and several mask options. A mask is something that controls what's visible on a layer. A clipping mask nests the layer over top of the one underneath. The top layer is now beholden to whatever pixels are visible on the layer it's clipping. From this menu, you can also choose Reference. When a layer is referenced, like a layer of line art for example, you could fill in color on a different layer as if it was on the line art layer. Just make sure you fill in any holes in the lines 
and turn off reference afterwards. You can also merge layers and masks from this menu. You can tap the letter on the right of a layer, usually an N, to bring up layer modes. You'll see Darken, Lighten, Contrast, Difference, and Color available at the bottom, with sub-choices on each. There's a lot to experiment with, but again, layer modes are about affecting the layers that are underneath. To start with, try using the Multiply mode under Darken, and the Lighten mode under Lighten. These make a darker or lighter version of the color that's underneath them, which is great for creating consistent highlights or shadows across multiple objects or colors. Double tapping the brush or eraser tool brings up their own menus. In here you can find lots of preloaded brushes, which can each be customized by double tapping on each. You can import brushes as well, and my favorite brushes are all linked in the description below. Moving on beyond just the basics, I've made several videos in the past featuring intermediate and advanced techniques in Procreate. I've assembled those videos into a playlist that you can find in the description of this video. If for any reason you have questions that aren't answered by those videos, please leave a question under this video. And even if I can't get back to you right away, I'll at least try to address the question in a future video. If this video was helpful for you, please hit like as that does help me out a lot. That's it for me today. I'm making new videos every week here on Character Design Forge. Subscribing on YouTube lets you know when new videos are made available. My Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon are all at Bagel Denizen or just Bagel Denizen. You'll see them in a few seconds. Thank you so much for watching and have fun creating.